Okay, my home computer sucks, and probably so does yours. I mean, it gets the job done. It is providing us with a proper Wi-Fi network, it has a main network, and it also has a guest network. So two networks on the same broadband router. And these are routers that are provided by Amazon Eero router slash firewall. It is a package that I've been received, which I've received from TalkTalk, Talk, which is a broadband service provider here in the UK. And it is great, but I'm looking for more functionalities, more VLAN so that I can isolate networks much more efficiently because I want to have my IoT devices because of all the smart home automation stuff. I like to keep that on a different network, keep the guest network isolated and have a main network where all my office machines and probably my home lapping devices will be resting. This is where I'm going to be installing OpenSense on this fanless machine. This is the Topton N100 PC and it's fairly quite hefty little machine. It has four e Intel NICs right here in the front and I'm trying to do this all without breaking the bank. So there's a little bit of a shopping list that you need for this upgrade. Firstly, you need a bare metal machine. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm using this one right here. It's a top tone N100 fanless PC. It comes with four Intel i226V NICs. I purchased this from AliExpress for 119 pounds with no RAM and storage. So I've got it upgraded with an 8 GB Crucial DDR5 memory card from Amazon, which is 19 pounds. And I've upgraded the storage to 128GB M.2 PCIe card from Amazon again for £12. So all in all, a very great value machine. You'll also need a USB drive. I'm using a USB drive that I've just found in my drawer. It is a USB-C and a USB 3 from SanDisk. You'll need a minimum of 8GB. An external monitor that is just sitting right here in front of me. And a keyboard and probably a mouse as well so I've got these two just down here. Also you'll need another machine to flash the OpenSense OS onto the USB drive so I'm currently using my Mac right now. You can use Windows whatever you have it's just a normal workstation that you provide. Now let's get things running. Let's see. So the first thing you would want to do is go to opensense.org Download OpenSense. Going with the AMD64 architecture, the VGA image type. And with the mirror location, you just choose a location that is closest to you, which makes sense. So I'm going to choose University of Kent because I'm in the UK. Download OpenSense. Once that is downloaded, just make sure that you have a software that will be able to flash the OS onto the USB. So I'm currently using a Mac, so I'm going to use Belena Etcher. Belena Etcher to do so. If you're on a Windows machine, you'll have to use Rufus. So now the download is completed. Let me just choose it from the file. Oh, I might have to unzip this first. Okay, so now after unzipping, we have got the image right here into my downloads. So flash and file, select the image, open, select target, sand disk, and flash, provide the password to do so. So while that's happening, I'm going to start up the top in box and we'll be able to plug the USB in and start boot. Okay, so that's completed. So the flashing is done. Plugged in the USB. Plugged in my external monitor, the external keyboard and mouse. And now I'm just starting up the machine. So previously I've already done a dry run of this and I've already installed it on the box, on the machine. But we're gonna go and do it again. So since the USB has the live image, you can always run OpenSense from the USB itself by logging into the root user and using the OpenSense password. But if you want to install it, that's what we're going to do again right now, is to install the image from the USB onto the machine. You will use installer username. One second. Yep. 
You'll use the installer login. Open sense as the password. So what's happening right now is it's actually trying to boot from the machine and I don't want to I want to show you guys how to install it from the USB so I'm gonna try to boot from the USB again. Okay so when you're at this place for the login let's use the installer open sense all right so that works so on the previous screen, if you would use root and open sense password, it will actually boot into the USB image because it's a live image, but using the installer username, you will be installing it onto the, onto the machine, onto the physical uh, bare metal machine. So let's continue with default key map. Let's install it as ZFS. Select virtual device type, select stripe, selecting the disk, yes we are sure, apologies for the bad uh, recording process because it's on my external monitor, I've got an iPhone to record the external monitor and yeah I just couldn't figure out a way to actually record the monitor so unless I was installing it on the virtual machine then I could actually run it on the Mac but since it's a bare metal machine it has to be like this okay so we're like 78% current system cloning and I know our process is at 62% so once this is done I will show up on the next step Okay, so for this demonstration, I will be leaving everything as default. Even though this will be used on my home network, I will be changing it at a later date. But keep the root password and just confirm with this reboot system. Okay, so I interrupted the process over here when it said press any key to start the manual interface assignment. And do you want to configure lags now? We could note that. VLANs, no. Now, enter the VAN interface name or A for auto detection. So please make a note of this. So I'm trying to put it as IGC0 as the VAN interface. So let me just put that as IGC0. to the LAN interface name so I'm gonna place that as IGC1 one enter the, enter the optional interface one name a for the detection nothing finished so it's finished so now as you can see van is IGC0 and LAN will be the IGC C1 do you want to proceed yes let's go Okay, right, so the VAN interface is zero, zero, C0 and the LAN is C1. Um, 192.168.1.1 is the IP address for OpenSense. So if you want to go to the GUI, the web browser, that's where you have to go to. And so now what I can do is connect it to my broadband open breach um, modem box. We'll go downstairs for that. So as you can see here, this is the fiber line that's coming from OpenReach. And this is black cable, the ethernet cable. That's what's gonna be connected to the VAN port in my OpenSense box. So, so that's the black cable that's coming from the floorboards and it's connected to this Euro router firewall which was provided by TalkTalk Talk. and what I'm going to do right now is connect it up to our open sense box yeah, Ethan 0 should be the LAN port Ethan 1 should be the LAN okay so I've got a laptop now which is not connected to the Wi-Fi 
so I'm gonna plug it into the OpenSense router right now so for this upgrade to test it out it would be nice to have a machine that has an Ethernet adapter or Ethernet port And this connects straight to the LAN port. And both of them are blinking, so generally a good sign. And now, the moment of truth, let's see if I have internet access or if I can actually connect to the OpenSense router. 192.168.1.1 Unable to connect. Not good. That is not good. A few moments later. So, as I suspected, the issue that I was having right now, and it's fixed, is basically the ports. Um, just make sure that, just double check that the ports are actually assigned properly. So Ethernet 0, in this case, is the LAN port. And Ethernet 1, in this case, is the WAN port for myself. I'll try to fix this later on, but for this demonstration, I'm just gonna keep it running because it's working now. And yep. So as soon as you get the security warning, because it has a self-signed certificate, we are good to proceed so we can advance and accept the risk and continue and here we are so we are currently up on the portal root open sense This is working, so that means I should be able to access the internet too. So I'm gonna speak first. Yep. As you can see over here, I'm connected to my TalkTalk Talk broadband, so it's getting the internet access from TalkTalk. Talk. So once again, I'm gonna connect my previous setup. So and cable back to the Eero network. Go to things back, back to my normal setup and I should be able to access my Wi-Fi and my Eero devices. So going to my Eero app, if I go to settings and if I change the network settings from, yeah. So going to network settings and going to DHCP and NAT and I place it into bridge mode. A reboot is required. Yep, be down for a minute. And effectively, I should be able to access the Eero devices once it's connected to the OpenSense router. And it should be able to just work effectively as how it normally did. But trial and error, so let's go and see if that works. So after doing the changes on my Eero hub and making the whole network into a bridge mode, so now the one uh, network is back connected to the OpenSense router, which is over here. And this cable, which was connected to the Lenovo laptop, the standalone laptop is now connected to the Eero router. And since this is set up as a bridge, currently connected to the Wi-Fi network connected to this, I should be able to access the OpenSense router. So back again on my normal setup. Okay, so after all the back and forth and setting up the Amazon Eero routers into a bridge mode, and now my MacBook, which is connected to the Wi-Fi, which is connected to the Amazon Eero, which is connected to the OpenSense router, I should be able to access OpenSense on 192 once. 168.1.1 and there you go so i already logged in before as you get the login screen root user open sense password 
And yeah, just an overview of the dashboard. Let's, let's do a little test. So as there's a graph on the side over here, shows the traffic in and traffic out. Let's push it to the limit a little bit. Boom, and you can see it's spiking up, traffic in, traffic out. So as you can see now, the um, OpenSense is doing my network traffic in and out. And I can now create VLANs, I can now create a lot more stuff, but there's a lot more features that I will not be able to play with. And as I can see, there's some ads over here. My Raspberry Pi is probably disconnected <laughs> and I need to figure that out as well at some later point. So yeah, so that's working as expected. Um, let's go into the interfaces. This is where I'm gonna change these later on once the video is ended. Let's go through the visit because we didn't really set this up correctly, I would say. So let's see the host name as OpenSense, local domain. For the primary DNS server, I always like to use Cloudflare. So Cloudflare DNS IPs. I know it's 1.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1, but I like to use the, the family DNS, DNS IP. So it's the family DNS. Introducing 1.1.1.1 for families. Things one dot one dot one dot three. And yep, there you go. So let me go that one dot one dot three and one dot zero dot zero dot three. Next. Always good to keep our correct time zone because in an enterprise environment you will need to look into logs and if logs are all over the time place you will have a tough time putting things into place. So IPv4 configuration I will DHCP. Um it's client, we'll just leave all this blank. Oh, private network so mentoring VLAN, yes. Leave this all default, LAN IP address. Let's leave it at is. Um, leave the subnet mask for 24, but this will give us 254 usable IP addresses. This can be extended at some point, but I'll leave it at 24 for now. Once again, leave it as default. I'll change this later. And the other thing that would, you should do whenever you're installing any device, whether it be an enterprise um, environment or in your home lab, is to check for updates and keep things up to date. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to more tech videos that will be related regarding home labbing and also DevOps in general, because I'm trying to upskill myself. And and my next video will be something to do regarding a true NAS cause I need to upgrade my Apple NAS media that I currently have or NAS server that I currently have which is a very old machine and I plan to get some Linux operating system running as a NAS server. But that's for future videos and I hope you guys like this one and thank you for watching and I will see you guys on the next one.